Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics, and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest tragic yet vaguely hilarious chapter in Rishi Sunak's attempt to play culture wars as his attempts to continue to pursue the Rwanda plan are scuppered by, well, Rwanda. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So Rishi Sunak is still persistent with the Rwanda scheme, essentially as a way of stringing along the nutters on the right of his party. The scheme has no chance of working, even in theory. Uh, if you explain to supporters what the plan actually is, not what they heard in the media, but what it actually is, they're no longer supporters because it doesn't make sense. The plan has been ruled unlawful on many, many fronts. Not just British law, which the Tories could change. Not just the European Convention on Human Rights, so leaving the Council of Europe won't change the judgment. The plan is unlawful at the most fundamental level of international law. The only way to change this is to completely remove the UK from international structures. And it could just be argued that only a lunatic would think the devastation that this would cause us would be worth it in order to send... 200 refugees to Rwanda a year for a few years. But Sunak is putting on a show of carrying on with the plan. He had talked about introducing emergency legislation to deal with it, but no independent legal expert that I've seen has said there's any prospect of this working. But Sunak has another wheeze as well, or did have. The main concern from the Supreme Court was that the Rwanda government may end up sending refugees back to their country of origin unlawfully because they have form for this. So Mr Bean, I mean, sorry, Rishi Sunak, had this bright idea of just sending British officials to Rwanda to oversee the process, you know, to make sure that this doesn't happen. Er, uh, no, said the Rwandan government. Why not, replied Sunak. Well, sovereignty, isn't it, said Rwanda. It seems that the Rwandan government are not all that keen on having their judicial process interfered with by foreign unelected bureaucrats. Couldn't make it up. A crap scheme pursued under the guise of sovereignty has been knocked back by an actual sovereignty argument. And it puts Sunak in a very tricky position. Truth be told, the right of his party are not interested in the Rwanda plan. It's quite likely that they pursued it deliberately as a way of engineering the arguments needed to abandon our international obligations on human rights. I keep saying, although a great many of them are stupid, those organising are not. And they're not spending all of their time and energy to send maybe a thousand refugees to Rwanda, especially when the deal also means we bring potentially the same number of refugees to Britain from Rwanda. What never seems to be mentioned in the mainstream media is the Rwanda plan is basically a refugee swap. Now, those arguing this nonsense have done so in order to claim that we still don't have sovereignty, like leaving the EU didn't do it, so now on to the next step, leaving the world. And the purpose is to remove human rights from 68 million people living in the UK. Not a few hundred people fleeing persecution or war. And it is people fleeing persecution or war, for those who still want to bang the illegal immigrant drum. If they were not, all we'd have to do is process their claim, find that it can't be substantiated, deny the claim, and then deport them. No hassle from the courts. Now, this is the decades-old trick. Blame a small number of immigrants for the problems caused by the wealthy elite. Use that to convince people to vote more power to that wealthy elite, who then use that power to make things way worse for the people who voted for them. I mean, it's 13 and a half years later, is the penny dropping yet? Yeah? They wanted people to vote to leave the EU because being a member of the EU means consumer rights, workers' rights, safety standards, environmental standards. We've seen all of those be stripped away. The wealthy elite don't make profit from us having rights. So now they've done that, they're free to lower our EU standards, which they have been doing so. Our waterways being so badly polluted is the most visible sign of this. But the, all of these standards have been set fire to once we'd left. But that's not enough. They want to take away all of our rights. Not... Not all of our rights stem from the EU, though. Others are from membership of the Council of Europe and even the UN. So it's the Council of Europe next. If they get their way, we would literally end up being twinned with North Korea. That's what they want for us. 
And this is Sunak's problem. If he can show that he has a potential plan to revive the Rwanda scheme, then he keeps the far right in their box. After all, their arguments about dropping all human rights laws are based on the notion that the government can't do exactly what it wants and should be able to. So if Sunak can show that he can find a way to do what he wants without torching more international memberships, then their argument is weaker. But the Rwanda scheme is nonsense. It was deliberately designed to be nonsense. I, I get the feeling that the far right were just waiting for it to be exposed as unworkable, legally, not operationally, so that they could go for Brexit part two, leave the Council of Europe. And this is where the stakes are really quite high now. The far right have now got limited time left in power. After 2019, they thought that they would have a decade at least in power and may even have supposed that stripping away our rights could have allowed them to move away from democracy altogether. But now they're left with a matter of months. If they can be sure that Labour won't introduce serious electoral reform, then, you know, they could just hibernate, wait for Labour to implode in government, which they will eventually, then come back to power and pick up where they left off. They just need to keep electing leaders who are either on their side, you know, maybe Priti Patel, or those too weak to do anything about them, you know, like the ones they've been electing for nearly two decades straight. Can't be a coincidence that all of the leaders they've had in the last 20 so years have been so spineless. But regardless of whether they believe Labour will introduce major reforms or not, there is always the risk. There's always the risk that they end up with proportional representation while they're in opposition. Then where are they? So they're motivated to act now and really quite quickly while they still have power. It's a powerful motivator to replace Sunak with someone more pliable and leave the election until the last possible moment. Sunak needs to prevent this by pretending he's got a way of dealing with the situation. News like this only leaves him with less road to kick his can down there. And while the party is fighting this battle over an invented problem with madcap solutions, nothing is being done about the schools or hospitals collapsing, rising energy prices, trade problems, or indeed anything which would actually make people's lives better if they actually did their jobs. And at the same time, all of this adds an element of instability to the government, which keeps May being the most likely date for the election, in my view. But there we are. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found the video interesting, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.